Dominic Tarczynski, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Uh, you're an MP and an MEP elect for Poland's Law and Justice Party, which was recently re elected to government and which is often criticized for being anti immigrant, anti refugee. But actually, you're not anti immigrant or anti refugee. You're okay with. Uh, white Christian immigrants from Ukraine, you've taken around two million of them in. You're just not okay, it seems, with brown Muslim refugees from the Middle East. White people fine, brown people not fine. There's a word for that, isn't there, Dominic? <laughs> Good evening. Thank you for having me. It has nothing to do with your uh, uh, color. It, it, hasn't, it, hasn't, it has nothing to do with the religion. I keep repeating it for the last four or five years. It's all about safety and the common sense. It's not, law, it's not about Ukrainians who are allowed to come to Poland. It's about illegal migrants who want to cross our borders. And if you're brown, white, yellow, or whatever, if you want to cross our border illegally, you're not allowed. We are reacting. Well, first of all, plenty of people are coming into Europe legally as asylum seekers. You have a legal right to asylum from places like Syria. Uh, but you say it's not about religion. You said, quote, we will not receive even one Muslim because this is what we promised. You didn't say illegal immigrants. You said we will not receive even one Muslim. It has nothing to do with the uh, Muslim religion. It's not Islamophobia, as someone's trying to tell us. It's all about this moment and this fact that at 2015, Angela Merkel started this madness, and now this is a problem about Muslims mainly coming to Europe. I'm surprised they are not going to Saudi Arabia, Qatar, or any other rich Muslim countries. They would, they would feel much better, isn't that? Um, you say Angela Merkel and her madness. I mean, Angela Merkel followed the law. The EU has law. There's a refugee convention. There's a universal declaration of human rights. Uh, the EU advocate general, which advises the European Court of Justice, found this week that your country broke EU law in 2015 when Poland refused to share the refugee burden. So it's your country, your government, Dominic, that's undermining European values, European laws, not immigrants, not refugees, not Muslims. No, not at all. This judgment was not about Poland only, it was about Hungary and others. And also, this judgment, this sentence, was, was about all countries which did not fulfill the expectations. You have to remember that the quota, systems, uh, the quota system, which failed, was very clear about the numbers. So even Germany and France did not receive as many as they should. For us, that was very clear uh, in 2015. Uh, we promised that we will never agree for the quota system, and our promises are kept. The whole migration crisis, it's a global thing. Europe is not responsible for what is happening in Syria. Poland is not responsible for this, what is happening in Iraq, in Syria, in other, other places. We never had any colonies. So if this problem is a global problem, where is Saudi Arabia? Where is Qatar? Where are the other Arab countries, rich Arab countries, which should help? They can help. Mecca is a great example. 100,000 tents used only once a year during the pilgrimage. Four million people can take this shelter and leave there for a year. They're empty. Nice, nice, beautiful tents, air-conditioned tents. They are empty. Well, you do realize that Lebanon has taken in, tiny Lebanon's taken in over a million Syrians. One in five of the population in Lebanon is a refugee. Turkey has more Syrian refugees than any country in the world. So Muslim majority countries, some are doing their part, some aren't. I agree with you. You also say in other interviews that this is about Christian culture. This is about Europe being Christian. Now you tell me, no, it's all about legality. I feel like you're all over the place. Are you objecting to That's refugees right. from Syria because they're not That's Christian right. or because they're not, they shouldn't be in Poland? Which one? You seem to be off a different excuses at different times. You have to apply. Polish law is very clear about it. Submit your documents, apply for a visa, get us the, the back, criminal back check, and then we're going to decide. We are not forced by any law to agree for that. It's the same in America. Even if you have a visa and you're trying to enter U.S., you still might say, you still might hear, no, you will, you're, you're not allowed. And there's no explanation. No one from, uh, uh, from U.S. side, they don't have to really Dominic, explain that, it. That might they make don't some have to sense. Say why you're not allowed. That might it's make some sense if you said, so first if you all, hadn't said, path, you we will not receive even visa. one Muslim. That's if you hadn't bragged about the fact that you don't have mosques in Poland. I mean, it sounds like you don't want them there because you're anti-Muslim and anti-Islam. Okay. So let me, let me go from the legal path to the society. 
So legally, you have to apply. Legally, you're allowed to apply. And this is up to us if we agree to, to have you in Poland. That's number one. Then our society, our structure. I keep repeating that in many mosques, we can hear about hijra. For us, homogenic society, Christian society is a value. For me, multicultural, uh, multicultural society, it's not a value. I used to live in London. I used to live there for five years. I used to work in US and I see the fruits of multiculturalism. For me, it's not a, it's, it's not a virtue. For me, it's not a value. So we have a right to think about our future in a way we want to. So Christian culture, Roman law, Greek philosophers, these are the, the, the virtues for us. It's funny That's that you mentioned, one. it's funny that you number mentioned, two. can I jump in we one second? We Sharia law I, in Europe. Okay. Uh, I am, I am, I I am the member, let me finish. Having Muslims finish. in your country doesn't mean you have Sharia law. You mentioned London, the mayor of London is a Muslim, there's no Sharia law. Let me ask you this, you mentioned London. Some would say it's hypocritical that you don't want Muslims in Poland because no, you... No, you, 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 you are having a place where the Sharia is present. Let me finish a question, let me finish the question. Many would say it's hypocritical uh, that you say you don't want Muslim immigrants in your country because they commit crimes, there's a security threat, and yet you hear exactly the same rhetoric about Polish immigrants in the UK from right wing politicians and media there. They say the Poles are groping women, they're feckless, they're criminals, they won't integrate. Don't you see the irony or the hypocrisy of treating Muslim immigrants to Poland in the same way that some Jail Britons, them. That some Britons them. treat Polish immigrants? OK, how many Poles blow themselves up in London or any other place in the world? That's the question I keep repeating. There is a lot of crime carried out interview. by how Polish immigrants, Poles according to the right-wing press. How many themselves and others because of their religion uh, hold on, or hatred? Dominic, Dominic, your argument doesn't work. Just last month no, in the no, UK... No, no, well, no, 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 the I'm question, your question was very specific. I'm answering your how question. Many de well, how I'm... many of them blow themselves up? OK. L let me answer your question in this way. A Polish immigrant was charged with the rape and murder of a British student last month. How would you feel if people in the UK started saying, we don't want Poles here anymore. We don't want rapists and murderers here. That's what you say about Muslims. You generalise about all Muslims in the same way that some on the right in the UK generalise about Poles. There's a lot of anti-Polish racism in the UK. Do you not see the irony that you're doing the same thing to Muslims as is done to Poles? No. No. First of all, if someone, if anyone... Committing a crime should be jailed. It doesn't matter. Is it Polish, is it, is it English, or anyone else? That's number one. Crimes which you mentioned are not committed in the name of Allah. What's that got to do with the Polish anything? Side. I thought not we were talking in the about name security. Who cares? They are just criminals. We're talking about and security they be threats. But why not? That's number one. But why not generalize? Number two, why, not, number why, two, why shouldn't British people generalize about Poles? That they You're are, generalizing about Muslims. They, not they all are Muslims rates. are terrorists, as you know. But all terrorists, all, but all most terrorists are Muslims. That's not true, as you know. In fact, that's not actually true. I mean, the most of the far right terrorist attacks in the U.S. this year were from should far be right jailed. Christians. If they committed a crime, they should be. It's funny you say most terrorists are Muslim. This year, one of the worst terrorist attacks that we saw was in New not Zealand. Not Christians, carried most, out, mostly well, non-believers. One of the worst terrorist attacks this year, one of the most high profile, was the murder of more than 50 Muslims in New Zealand by a Christian far right white supremacist. Yeah, and he's jailed. That's it. So, um, so, so what? So Muslims are jailed as well. What's your point? Should I blame all white Christians for what that man in New Zealand did? My point is that they, the difference be, between our reaction after the New Zealand was condemnation. I do condemn that. Everyone condemning it. After the terror attacks, we can hear from imams. That's the reaction. That's they are true, happy, as you know. and they want to kill all the infidels. That's a lie. So that's, that's a lie, the difference Dominic. between that's Western civilization and... Imams across the world did not applaud well, terrorist fact. attacks. You can just well, Google it, just Google yeah, it. You, okay, you can Google also the Charlie Hebdo okay, attacks. Okay, you say this is, this is a lie. It is a lie I to say all imams applaud. News. Okay. I can tell. Okay, let me you've ask got, you this question. You've got, you've got hate preachers. There are hate preachers, indeed. That's not all imams, though. You said all imams clapping. Let me ask you this, Dominic. After the Charlie Hebdo attacks, you had the... King of Jordan. There you go. You don't have hate preachers in the Christian churches. Uh, that's not true either. After the Charlie Hebdo attacks, you had the King of Jordan, the Prime Minister of Turkey, the Foreign Minister of Egypt, the President of the Palestinian Authority, numerous leaders from the Muslim majority world literally march through the streets of Paris in solidarity with the non-Muslim victims of those attacks. I don't remember seeing you or any other member of the Polish government marching in Christchurch, New Zealand, in solidarity with the Muslim victims oh, this of that attack. I don't remember seeing you marching in Christchurch.
all this solidarity, all this solidarity, candles and all this painting on the floor, it's, yeah. a, it's a joke. But where was we yours? We don't need this kind where of... Where was your uh, march? Uh, I don't remember seeing your march in New Zealand. Real action. Dominic, I don't remember seeing you and the Polish government marching in New Zealand. Answer that. Why didn't you because do what we, Muslim because, leaders did because and march we behave differently. in Christchurch? No, we I'm don't asking. need marches. We have our borders, which are safe. That's got nothing to do with the question. A Christian far-right nationalist carried out an attack in New Zealand. If you're saying Muslims should condemn a Muslim attack, which they did, why didn't you go to New Zealand and condemn that attack? Why didn't you march like Muslim leaders did in Paris? Why didn't you march in Christchurch? If you think that these Muslims, these preachers, these imams are so peaceful, let them go to Saudi Arabia, let them go to Qatar, if you want to be a refugee, you have to flee to the first safe country, neighbor country. Then you have to apply, you have to prove who you are. And now we are having people in Europe, which is not, which is, Poland is not a neighbor of Syria, without documents or with five passports, the same picture in different names. That's just a fact from our interior ministers. So it's all about safety. You are trying to put the whole subject in a box of Muslim, Islamophobia. Even, even, if, even if no believer will gonna come or Buddhist, we will not let him in if he's illegal, that's it. Let me go back to my question, which you avoided answering. The Christchurch shooter was an immigrant. He was a Christian. He was a white nationalist who killed Muslims. And he had on his weaponry references to a battle in which a king of Poland defeated Muslim invaders. He had the name of a Polish military commander on one of his weapons. So I ask again, why didn't you, according to your own logic, go to Christchurch and disown him? Say this has nothing to do with us, nothing to do with Poland or Christianity. That's what you expect of Muslims. Why didn't you do that in New Zealand? I ask again. Well, thank you very much. Thank God for King Sobieski. He stopped Muslims in Vienna. Thank God for That's King Sobieski. That's what the terrorists said as well, one. by the way. But I'm not going to react uh, on any idiot who is trying to use our king and beautiful history for a terror attack. And why can't Muslims say the same? Do you not see the illogic of your position? If not King Sobieski, You're basically Muslims saying what every Muslim Europe, says about no Muslim in, terrorist attacks. No one invited them. Not, not at all. OK. One, I got asked a question, though, and I want to talk about the broader cultural point, because you have said in a previous interview this is about culture. This is about preserving Christian culture in Europe. I'm saying to you, white supremacists have carried out horrific terrorist attacks this year in El Paso, Texas, San Diego, California, right. Christchurch, New Zealand. And they have talked about stopping mosques, stopping the invasion of Muslims, protecting Christian culture. It's virtually the same language that is used by your party and by you. There is an overlap. We can see that with our eyes. It's the same rhetoric. No, the difference, is, the, the difference is we are not shooting. If someone is a terrorist or killer or criminal, uh, should be jailed. You're not shooting, but are you inciting the violence by using that rhetoric of invasions and stopping mosques? Do not, do not compare me to the, to the criminal. I'm comparing your rhetoric, not you. I'm saying the rhetoric is similar, is it not? Or are you denying that? It sounds like you're agreeing. First of all, as I said, it's, not, it's against our law. That's number one. It's against our culture. And the culture is very important. As I told you, we are a Christian country. We don't want hijra in Poland. We don't want Poland being taken over by Muslims, Buddhists, or someone else. For us, Christianity as identity, as, a, as our DNA, is very important. And our government has the right to say no. And no one will ever force us to take Muslims, Buddhists, non-believers in huge numbers. But we are helping by sending money because our government is very straight. We have to help. We have to help in the place of the conflict in Syria, in Iraq. That's it. Do not force us to do things which our society doesn't want. That's why our government was elected. That's why we have won. Dominic Tarczynski, thanks for joining me on Upfront.